So what is the most secure and reliable investment for your future? And I'm talking about financial investment. That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So first of all, what do you think is the most secure financial investment in your future? Is it the stock market, mutual funds, uh, putting money in the bank? What is it? Go ahead and comment below. I'm curious to know before you watch this video what that is for you. And now I'm going to share with you what my thoughts are about it. So let's first begin with some basic personal finance rules. And then I'm going to give you an unusual answer for the most secure financial investment in your future. Ready? Okay. So the first thing is, and by the way, just, just to give you some context, the reason why I'm talking about this is I was talking with one of my clients, excuse me here, talking with one of my clients and she was concerned about her financial future. Uh, she has a couple of months of financial buffer in terms of living expenses, gratefully, and she also has, um, you know, some clients right now. So gratefully, she doesn't have to worry about some money at this at this time. But she, because being an entrepreneur means that you don't have usually you don't have like a, a pension you're building up from working in a corporate job or something like that. You are now responsible for your own financial future. Is that true for you too? I mean. You know, you work in a job, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll add to your 401k or whatever. But as an entrepreneur, you have to take care of your own finances. And, you know, the, you don't have a stable salary anymore. You have to create your own stable income, right? So there's a lot riding on you financially as an entrepreneur, as a, as a business owner. And so she's concerned about her future. She's like, well, what if, you know, I don't, I'm, now, I'm not able to make enough money to, to, to save for retirement and I'll be out on the streets when I'm older or whatever. You know, I mean, it's not going to likely be true, but uh, there's a concern. And maybe you're concerned about that too. Are you concerned? You know, maybe if you're willing to and want to share, please feel free to comment below. So, um, so let me first, sh <laughs> and thank you, Linda, for joining, joining me. Uh, for for this um, Facebook live and she said knowledge expertise and content is that the most secure investment in your future? You're, you're quite close. You're quite close um, So uh, let me first share with you the, the what I consider to be the basic four personal finance rules And then I'll tell you about the unusual tip. Okay, so first personal personal finance rule spend less than you earn spend less than you earn Okay, now that seems obvious if you earn $5,000 a month, you should spend less than $5,000. Well, actually, if you, if you earn $5,000 a month, what do you earn after taxes? You should calculate that. Maybe after taxes, you have $3,500 a, a month left. You should be spending, all of your spending should equal no more than $3,500 a month, right? If you, you know, if you earn only $5,000 a month uh, in income. So spend less than you earn after taxes, okay? After accounting, that's number one. Number two is always keep, okay, now I, there's an exception to number one rule, which is if you're spending all of your time building your business, if you don't have a job right now, then I would, then there's a justification for spending money out of your savings to build your business. But you cannot violate the second rule. What's the second rule? Always keep a buffer of money for your living expenses. How much buffer should you keep? You should keep enough to have the confidence that you can get a job if you need to. So for example, if you're very confident that within three months you can get a job that's acceptable to you and that will pay all your bills after accounting for taxes, okay, then you only need three months of living expense buffer. But if you're not sure, you're like, man, it could take me a whole year to find a job that is acceptable to me, that'll pay all my bills and more, then you need 12 months of living expense buffer. How much money does it cost you to live every month? 3,500, 5,000, whatever it is, you need to keep that amount every month for, for at least three to 12 months. Usually that's a, that's a good rule. Um, which also, it's not part of my rules here, but you should probably spend less. I mean, some of you are already quite frugal and that's awesome. But some of you spend too much money, for example, on business training programs, et cetera. Uh, don't buy my stuff if you need to spend less, uh, honestly. So, um, okay, so always, that's the second rule, always keep a buffer for, of living expenses enough to be able to get a job. Third, third rule is when you have extra money, 
in addition to paying off all your bills and having a little bit of fun and saving for living expense buffer, if you have anything left, you should pay it towards your highest interest expense debt first, your highest interest debt first. So for some of you, that might be, I don't know, a car or a, a, your, your mortgage or your credit, definitely your credit card debt. You should not have any credit card debt. I mean, ideally you would not because high credit card debt is so ridiculously high interest. To me, anything that's more than 3% interest is high interest. I'm very conservative with my finances. So your, your credit card debt's probably what, 12%, 20% some of you? So God, anything above 3%, anything four or five or more percent, I'm like paying that stuff off as quick as I can. So any extra money besides saving for taxes, saving for living expenses, um, paying off all your bills, you should be paying off highest interest debt. Addition, in addition to whatever the, 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 the monthly minimum is, more than that, okay? And then that's the third rule. The fourth rule is never borrow money. Never, ever, 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 ever borrow money, especially to build your business. Bad idea. Never, I should say, never borrow money unless the interest is extremely low, meaning 3% or less. That's my rule, personal rule, okay? Never borrow money to build your business. Do not borrow money to build your business. Can I say that again? Do not borrow money to build your business unless it's 3% interest or, or less. I say 3% per year, not 3% per month. 3% interest per year or less, okay? Do not borrow money to build your business. Um, okay, and all right, so those are the four basic rules, okay? Spend less than you earn. Always keep a, a living expense buffer enough to get a job if you need to. Pay off your highest interest debt first, okay? And then never borrow money unless it's 3% or less, okay? So besides that, and I'll tell you why the 3% later, but let me now give you the unusual, uh, the unusual tip that you came for. Your most secure investment, Linda had it partly right, which is knowledge, expertise, and content, but let me be more specific than that. Your most secure investment for your future is having a loyal and growing audience. Having a loyal and growing fan base. With people who like you and trust you, if you have enough people like that, you will never be in want. You will never lack for anything. In the olden days, before we had the modern internet and individualism and individual, like everyone has to fight for themselves now, in the olden days, we had a community. That was your most secure investment, is to be a good member of your community, good member of your tribe. If you ever got kicked out of your tribe, you're done for. You know, you're, you're gonna die out in the woods. But if you stayed in your tribe, you'll always get taken care of. Well, these days, we're so individualistic, we don't have a tribe anymore. So you have to build your own tribe. You now are responsible for creating your own tribe. And that is your most secure investment. It doesn't matter if you don't know what you're gonna sell yet, some of you watching this don't know what business you're gonna build, don't know what your product or service is gonna be. Please do not delay in building your own community, building your own fan base. Do start today. I mean, as an example, I, I've, if you've been watching some of my videos or reading some of my articles, you know that I've started a side business. I call it my side business, even though I don't know what I'm gonna sell in that business yet. But I at least am building my own audience already in my side business. And already, uh, now that it's been almost five months, I have 2,000 people in my side business who have engaged with my content in the last 90 days. 2,000 people. I, ca I count it as a 90-day window. Uh, and I, I, you know, on, on, on Facebook, just on Facebook alone, well, I, it's all I have in my side business is Facebook page. Um, so that's it. If you dedicate yourself, bottom line, the most important thing you do in your business is to grow a loyal and growing audience, you can feel secure in your future. You don't have to feel like you're gonna be out on the streets when you're, old, you know, when you're too old to work. You will be taken care of by your community of people. Why and how is that true? 
Because if you have a large enough audience of people who trust you and care about you, I mean, even if you have nothing to sell, even if you say, everybody, I, am, I need to pay my, my next month's rent. If I said that today, if I said, okay, I've run out of courses to sell you. I don't have any coaching to provide to you because maybe I, I, I'm mentally incapable now of coaching you and helping you. And if I said, can you please help me pay my rent? You probably would. I mean, there, it, all of you would chip in, you know, $10 a month or whatever to make sure George can pay his rent and, and his food. And I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll, you know what I mean? Like I, I have a large enough audience now, now where I don't have to be out on the streets. I could probably move in with one of you <laughs> if, I, if I, if you, you know, if, if, if I needed to, right? You, you see what I mean? I mean, that's, that's an extreme case, but more likely what's going to happen is you grow enough of an audience where you can then guess what? Sell them anything that you believe is worthwhile for them. Of course, we would do it authentically. But with a loyal and growing on, you can sell anything that you're interested in that you believe is worthwhile to them, and they will trust you enough to, to seriously consider buying it from you. Because most people, if you just run Facebook ads to a cold audience, people who don't know who you are, are not going to buy anything from you because they don't even give you the time of day to really consider buying it from you. You don't even have their trust enough to consider the sale. But when you have a real audience and a loyal audience, they will do you the favor of considering your product or service, whatever it is you're trying to sell to them. And by the way, you don't even have to create your own product or service. If you have an audience, plenty of people will be happy to sell to your audience with your endorsement and recommendation. So if you believe in another person's product or service, another company's offering, you can then partner with that company. They can do all the manufacturing or all the creation of the service, and you simply recommend and endorse that company's offering to your audience, and your audience will be happy to buy it if it's a right fit for them, if you believe it's a right fit and you can make the case and say, hey, you know, I really believe in this offering. It helped me out a lot. It helped out my, you know, my colleagues or my friends or whatever it is. They will buy it and you will earn money and the other company will take care of all the marketing and all the customer service and fulfillment, et cetera. So in my side business, which I'm spending two hours a week building, I might, maybe I won't ever create a product. Maybe I'll just sell other people's stuff because I only have two hours a week, you see. So, but if I have an audience, I can make enough money. So that is the most secure. Does that make sense? Let me know if, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> and thank you, Captain says, can you move in with us already? <laughs> Captain, I, uh, I'll be happy. Your, your kids look adorable. Uh, maybe I'll be okay with that. <laughs> so, all right, let's now, let me now share with you. So, so, so how do you build an audience? I mean, if you're here, if you're first time you're watching my videos, Look back on all my other videos. I talk about audience building in almost every video. So I already give you all of that and just give you a quick summary. The most, um, the smartest way to build an audience is through focusing on creating consistent, relevant, authentic content. Okay. I'll just give you those words. You could see all everything else. Um, because if you, if you focus on content, if you focus on creating a quantity of content so that you can practice enough to get better and better and better at communicating and smarter and smarter and smarter about your field, then you'll, you'll build an audience that's growing and trusts you more and more and et cetera. Okay. So, and then you can partner with other people to, uh, you know, trade, you know, to cross promote and find new audiences that way or use Facebook ads or whatever it is, but content, uh, consistency, relevance and authenticity is sort of like the the bottom line rule for me okay so why did I say 3% remember I said don't borrow money unless you can get it at 3% or lower uh, and why why should you pay off all of your debt that's higher than 3% you know pay it off as quickly as possible it's because if you can borrow money at 3% or lower then you can make money by investing in a stock market index fund. So, so for those of you who don't want to get into personal finance stuff right now, you can end this video. Thank you for watching. But let me just tell you a little bit about sort of sort of personal finance, like stock market investing, etc. The first rule of stock market investing is do and just investing in general 
Do not pick individual stocks. Don't listen to anybody who says, oh my God, this company is doing really well. You should buy their stocks. Mistake. I don't care what company it is. Okay. I don't care because do your research on this. Anybody who picks stocks, like, you know what? I'm smart enough to say that I'm going to invest in these 10 companies because they're doing really well. I'm going to invest in these 20 companies, these five companies will always lose to the market in the long term. Yeah, you might like, oh my God, see, I made money, George. I invested in that stock and next month I made money. And then you get all your, your hopes up and you think, well, maybe I'm a smart investor. I'm going to try investing in different companies that have different. If you look at your five to 10 year track record, you will have lost money. You will have made less money than you would have if you had simply invested in a stock market index fund. What is an index fund? An index fund is a, a, a mutual fund that basically takes all the companies in the whole market. It's called putting your eggs in many, many baskets instead of one basket or five baskets or 20 baskets. I don't care. You should, your, your, your basket of mutual funds should be like at least hundreds of companies, hundreds of companies, not not a few dozen, okay? And it should be dozens of industries, not three industries that you invested in, okay? Um, so, yeah, anyway, I, 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 I'll, later on, well, tomorrow when I post the article in companion to this video, I'll give you a couple links to research further. But do not pick, don't think you're going to be winning the market by picking stocks. In the short term, it looks like you're winning. In the long term, if you, if you do the math, you'd be like, man. So, so the, the, the typical stock market return, historical returns, basically have been about 7 to 10%, 7 to 10%. And I like to say 5% is the super conservative average. So if you invest in a stock market index fund, which is basically all the companies, S&P 500, okay? S&P 500 um, index fund, you're going to earn basically 7 to 10% a year. If you average it out over five to 10 years, you earn seven to 10% reliable, secure. It's been the history for, I think it's, they've tracked it for like a hundred years or something like that. Right? So if you then take out the money you pay for taxes, right? You'll earn at least 5% after taxes, after taxes, you'll, well, depending on your country, some of you are in Europe and the taxes may be higher. I don't know what the taxes are, are in Europe, but in the U S the taxes are, 15% for capital gains for stock market you know, returns. So 15% off of 7% is 5.9%. So you earn about 6%. But I just like to be conservative and say, fine, I'm going to count 4 to 5%, 4 or 5% returns after taxes on, on an index fund. And by the way, I use a socially responsible index fund. So you might want to look that up. So instead of just investing in the S&P 500, you should, you know, if you have certain values about the environment, about society, you look up social invest, socially responsible index funds and find one that has several hundred companies, at least over a hundred companies or at least a few dozen industries, maybe over a dozen industries. But you should, again, diversify, 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 okay? Um, but they, they still follow some social social guidelines like they're good for the environment or that at least they don't, they're not terrible for the environment and they don't have like slave trade going on. They don't have, um, they don't sell tobacco or firearms. They're the most basic stuff, right? Um, anyway, so that's why I said you can borrow money. If you can borrow money at 3% or less, that's might be smart. Borrow money at two to 3% and invest it in the stock market index fund and you'll earn, you'll earn money. <laughs> you'll make money by doing that. Right. Um, but, Long story short, I'll end the video now because I'm not a personal finance advisor, so don't make any decisions, per finance decisions based on what you what you learn from me. Uh, I'm just you know kind of giving you my personal opinion on it. Um, but I'm a marketing advisor, and I can tell you that from a marketing side of things, the most reliable investment you can make is growing your own trusting and 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 loyal audience. You'll never be in want. You can always sell something that, that they appreciate that they'll buy. Okay. So I wish you well. Thanks for watching. And uh, let me just thank those of you who are, are here live. Um, Alejandra, thank you. Uh, Andrew, thank you. Captain and Ross and Linda, thanks so much for joining me. Those are the ones I'm seeing right here on the screen right now. So uh, I hope you will make wise financial decisions. 
remembering that the wisest decision you can make besides the four rules that I said is growing your own audience because then you'll never be in want. And if you, and one more thing I should say, I should, I should have mentioned this. My Facebook ads are returning me 90% return on investment, 90%. Let's compare that to the stock market, which is 7%, 7% stock market, 90% return on Facebook ads. Which one is smarter? So that's why if when I have extra money, instead of putting in the stock market now, I've paid off my high interest debt, thankfully. And now that I've done that, my, my money is going into Facebook ads because it's not, I'm 90% return. Now let's say that I had a really bad year and it was like a third of that, 30% return is still higher than the stock market of 7%. It's still several times higher. So that's why, to me, Facebook ads right now in 2018, 2019 probably, is still the highest return on investment of anything out there. But you need to learn how to use it well. That you can't, you know, can't just mess around with Facebook ads either. So you gotta learn it, learn to use it, learn to do it well, and it'll be. And when I say 90% return, I'm talking about all of my Facebook ads, not just the ads where I sell my courses. I'm talking about ads where I just promote my my content that has no call to action. I'm including those ads too. The ads that put my videos out there, put my articles out there, I include that expenditure, plus the ads that sell my courses. You put all of it together and then look at how much I make in terms of my courses, just my courses, not including my, I'm not even counting my one-to-one -one coaching and my master heart, my group coaching program. I'm just talking about selling my courses. I get a 90% return on investment considering all my Facebook ads. Amazing, right? So there you go. That's just an, that's an example of what, how great of an investment it is to build your audience. All right. Blessings to you. And I will see you in the next video. And thanks, Gord, for joining me as well. Take care.